Good morning, Daryl Crow here. You know, each Monday morning we answer our students' questions, and I've been told we've got quite a few here today. So, Joe, why don't you go ahead and start helping us out? Sounds like a plan, Daryl. First one is from Rose, and she's got a question. Number one, she says, It would be great if you would list all the colors used in the video and the medium so that I can be sure to have them ready for when they're needed. That's uh, probably a pretty good suggestion. Uh, um, what do you think about that, Joe? You're the technical... Well, what I was planning on doing as we do these kind of videos from now on, I'll make sure that I list not only the paints, but also the brushes used. I'll put a little descriptive title on them. On the... Uh, on the paintings themselves. So as we do the videos, Anything to do with painting. But they'll be right on the video. They'll be right on the video from now on. Okay, but one of the things that we do is right in the beginning of each and every video, we go through all the supplies that are being used, and uh, the paints, the brushes, and uh, the medium, as well as the canvas. Now, I don't say the canvas size, but generally I use a 16-inch by 20 canvas or an 18-inch by 24 canvas because they fit the uh, uh, camera lens size better than any other canvas. It just may be more helpful if we also put the text as well for a visual aid. Because you do always mention the colors and brushes you're using, but they're not really descriptively pointed out in print, so maybe that will help. Okay, well that uh, will be something we'll be doing from now on, Ross. Now, uh, Joe, do you think we should have a, uh, we have a general list of supplies on the websites. Yeah, we also actually, put, uh, I, we can put together a video also that shows all the different paints and all the different brushes and put that up as well. That's already up there, actually. And I think what you mean is on the... Uh, you Can Paint Club. On the You Can Paint Club, as well as YouTube. Didn't we do, like, what's the minimum amount of supplies? Yes, we did. So it's, on, it's in both locations, yeah. Okay, well, we're certainly going to add that, Ross. Thanks for the question. And uh, the second question is, uh, please, please let me know how you've lost your weight. Oh, my weight. I'm struggling with mine. Well, you know, I have struggled ever since I was an adult on weight, and I actually became what I call a diet expert, Joe. And I had to, uh, uh, you know, I just, just seemed like the minute I found a diet that worked, there was no need to test it any further. So what I would do is uh, uh, try one diet, and it found out it worked, go on to the next one. With the rest, of course, between the two, you don't want to work yourself out. But um, how I really lost my uh, weight, and, and I have to tell you, being overweight is no fun. There are a lot of problems with it especially if you do a lot of traveling. You know, you, you know I used to get this morbid humor uh, when I got on an airplane because I will aid folks. Uh, some of those, some of you have uh, seen me before at 400 pounds, but you know, I go right down that uh, airplane aisle and I'd sit there and look at my uh, ticket and I'd look at that center seat and you could see the sweat coming down everybody's faces. And then you move to the next and you do it again until you got to yours. Well, that ain't, uh, that ain't pleasant if you're overweight. And there's a lot of things that are just not pleasant. You see, what I did is I woke up one morning and I realized that uh, I was not going to live much longer if I didn't take care of my weight and get it under control instantly because I was suffering from heart disease, uh, liver disease, kidney disease. I had neuropathy, had diabetes. Uh, I was out of breath all of the time. And I could just feel my life uh, becoming more and more restricted. So what I did is I went on down and I talked to my uh, doctors and they all recommended I look into a gastric bypass operation. And that's what I did. I did that two and a half years ago and I've lost like 165 pounds. And I see I have about 45 more pounds to lose, but that's okay. I'm on my way down and I'm now closer to 200 than I have been in 30 years, Joe. Well, that's why I probably should get off my seafood diet because all the food I see, I want. It's not doing me any good, unfortunately. So. Well, I've been on that diet, so I know what you mean. So, Roz, uh, I understand, and it's very hard. And I'm gonna tell you, if you just wanna to talk to me about the operation, you go ahead and give me a call. 
Uh, in fact, if anybody just wants to sit there and talk to me about weight loss, give me a call. My number's on the uh, website at uh, darylco.com, and I'll be happy to sit down and at least share with you my experiences. Okay, that was a very good answer. I'm proud of you. Unfortunately, the next question is technically related. Uh, I feel way you no longer let me have access to your answer hat. I came up with my own. You came up with your own yes, a hat that represents being technical? Absolutely. Uh, you can't get more technical than this when you're wearing this kind of a hat. Oh, oh. my God. What? That's, That's my... That is no technical. Do you realize the painstaking process I went through to figure out the right answer? There. That'll oh, take now. care. Now. Now. Now we're talking. Now, now this is... Does it work? Yeah. Now I feel confident. Yeah, the question that I have that's technical is about our painting club. And the biggest question we get is, will the videos play on mobile and uh, platforms? And if what, what do I have to do? Our videos are set up to play on any platform. Android platform, Apple platform, uh, iPad, iPod, you name it. The whole thing is we have a section on our paint club It says mobile users click here. You click there and the video should play. Now if they don't for any reason, you may need to download the app specific to your phone or device that you're using. There's several apps out there, they're all free, uh, but you need to make sure you do it like Apple doesn't have a flash player. Uh, however, our mobile platform is set up for them to play it, but you may need an app specific to your device. There's too many devices, they're too numerous to list. What I'll do is I'll do a posting and we'll post it uh, on the front page of one of our uh, videos and you'll see exactly what you need. But there's just so many of them out there. I don't have the time at this particular point to do it. But that's my answer. And thanks for the wonderful answer hat. I will now turn you back over to the man who will never let me steal his hat again. Darryl Crow. <laughs> All righty, thank you, Joe. And, uh, you know, if, if we ever get another technical question, I know that once you don those propeller wings... Hey, nothing like it. It's in celebration, actually, of the 110th year of the anniversary of flight. So it couldn't have been a more appropriate hat. <laughs> now, we have another question that says, I am having trouble with pine trees. There are so many different ones. And I'm hoping that you can show me the secret. I can do deciduous trees easily. In fact, when I was painting with acrylics, a tree was always there. What's your solution? Please help. Okay, pretty much um, I like using a fan brush to make the pine trees or the evergreens, as I call it, the family of uh, trees. The key, okay, and we go over this, in, we have an entire video in acrylics, an entire video in uh, oil painting techniques, and another uh, video in the water mixable techniques. So we have three different videos that we put together on just how to make trees. And I go into exhausting detail on how to do the evergreen trees. But there's a secret, okay, and, and this. And, and I think I can demonstrate it without going to the canvas. And that's this hand is a secret. Okay. Now, what happens here is that the general, see how I'm pressing the whole uh, fan brush down? A lot of people, if, if this line right here with the center uh, trunk of a pine tree, they like to go and press one side and then press the other side and come back. And, and that just looks like a very uh, scrawny tree. The secret is not using the width of the brush. The secret is just using the side of this one edge. Okay, now let me show it to you on my hand. See, I, if this is the trunk right, of the tree, I just press like that and see how I move the whole brush over? Okay. So you're moving your whole hand and then you come back to the center and you can do, so it's cerebral presses. It's not just one, we're using all the edges. 
You see, a lot of people just like to press on the edge for the tree trunk. The tree trunk really, are, I'm sorry, for the pine tree and making all those branches just by pressing that very tip. But you want to press this edge, this side, the small amount, just like that. And so it is the repetition where I'm constantly pressing and moving over. Okay, just like that. That's the secret. Now, I show that in a lot of films. Now, one of the things that we have just done um, in uh, the month of January 2013 is we released three different films. And one of them was called Watercolors. The other one was called In the Still of the Night. And the third one was Frosty. And there are so many evergreen trees. And we even go into slow motion with how to make those trees. So take a look at those films if you can get access to them. And if you're a club member, you don't ever have to pay for another film. You have immediate access to everything. Uh, if you want to uh, find out about our club membership, you can go to our website at darylco.com. So I think, Joe, that by reviewing all those different uh, uh, preparation films, our tree films, and by some of the lessons we've done, they'll get that. But as long as they remember that particular secret, use the edge, not the full width. Well, that's a great tip. And I mean, it's a lot of things that just people just don't really realize unless they've seen it. We've got another question here from Gerald. Gerald says, I'm getting ready to start acrylic painting under your video instruction, but I'm having trouble with finding the medium that you mentioned. What I bought is Liquitex gloss medium and varnish. It is white and says flow medium on it. Is this what you are asking for us to use? Well, pretty much what I ask people to use, we had this question a week or two ago, and my answer is still the same, and we appreciate people giving us uh, uh, these questions. What I like to do is encourage you to send your question. Even if we've answered it before, we'll answer it again. And we, we just want to make sure that you get the answers you need to keep you painting. The acrylic medium that I use is the Winsor Newton Even Flow. And uh, it is so such a good uh, acrylic medium. I also love using Chroma's Atler uh, Lean Medium, or not Lean Medium, but their uh, acrylic medium. And I also like using uh, the Martin F. Weber uh, acrylic mediums as well. So there's a lot of companies out there. They're making medium. Just go down to the store. Go where you shop for your art supplies or where, where you order them online. And ask them, what are the different acrylic mediums? And that's what you should be using. Okay. Uh, the Winsor Newton is called Even Flow. And it's a flow improver, and that's exactly what we use a lot of. But the key to keeping your uh, acrylic painting successful resides in using the right kind of medium, and secondly, keeping your paint wet while you're working. Keep your paints wet, keep your uh, paintings wet, and we go a lot into that in our uh, acrylic instruction. So, and, and we've done that here with, uh, I think we have a 19 part series on how to paint uh, uh, a Cape Lighthouse here uh, on YouTube as well too, Joe. Yes, we do, Daryl. And there's one last question for today. And in celebration of the 110th year of flight I just thought I'd put on a different hat as I present this. Megan wants to know, she says, I buy canvases all the time. Why do they provide me with enough sticks to build a house? Okay. You know, this is an ironic uh, uh, question, uh, Joe, because I have found um, that when you buy canvases, Sometimes they don't have this little bag of woods on them. And then others always have a little bag of these little wooden sticks. Well, what is the answer, Daryl? You're driving me crazy. Why do some have it and why don't others have it? Okay. Uh, <laughs> folks, you should have seen him doing that. I mean, that, that was ready for an Academy Award. 
the uh, the reason some have it is because they build poor quality uh, uh, art, or I should say, they. It's just ironic to me that those who make really good canvas always supply these, and those who make very poorly constructed canvas don't supply these woods. And so, uh, what I have, uh, what these are used for, is you put them into the backs of a uh, canvas to tighten up the canvas so it stretches really solid and really tight and it's not wobbly. Have you ever opened up a, uh, a canvas and you find that it looks like there's ripples on it and, and it doesn't feel tight? It should feel tight, almost like a, the skin of a drum. And uh, what we do on this, let me just get a, uh, a canvas here. You'll notice that in the corner of each of these canvas, there's this extra wide slot. That's made so that this piece of wood can fit right in there, okay? And uh, what they do is it stretches up against the edge here, causing that corner to tighten up. And you can even put one on the top and you just uh, go ahead and tap it in or force it in like this. And what happens, see that? It's stretching that corner so that the canvas is nice and tight. And you do this on all four corners. So that's why you have these woods. Now, that was a great answer. Well, it actually was the correct answer, too. Oh, God. Since when did we change our venue? Oh. Okay. Well, folks, uh, any more questions, Joe? No, that's going to do it for today. Well, I'd like to encourage you that with your questions, go ahead and send them to me at daryl at darylcrow.com. And we'll go ahead and answer them. And we'll also send you a gift for taking the time to write us, to send us an email, to give us a call. I'm Daryl Crow, and yes, you can paint.